Hello, welcome to our channel. Um, first of all, thanks to all the subscribers. We've managed to break over 100 in a very, very short period of time. Thank you very much for all the views, all the shares that you guys uh, did in our on our channel. Um, because of that, we decided that we're going to show you all the equipment that we use, um, mainly because we started to get questions in our comment section about uh, various bits and pieces that we use here. Today, it's going to be an overall look of the the tools the main tools that we use on a daily basis like the microscope and our hot air stations and whatnot we're not going to go too far in depth with them it's just an overall look so you can um, have an idea uh, you will find all the links in the description well for most of the stuff anyway that we can find online to show you the links um, so without further ado let's jump into it Right, so we'll start with the multimeter or multimeters that we use here. Uh, for our main application, I use the Unity UT801. Um, it, it has a 2000 counts DMM, as you can see here, read the brochure. <laughs> I've been using this for the last four or five years. It never gave me any trouble. Um, the main thing that I like about it is that it runs on DC power rather than on batteries. Um, the downside to that, to this multimeter is that while it has all the functions, um, sometimes it's not very accurate on, on certain things. But for that, we have a different multimeter that um, Louis Rossmans recommended. And this is the TechPower TP9605BT. Uh, it's a handheld multimeter. I hate this thing to death because it has batteries rather than, than DC. And I have a tendency of leaving them turned on. So the batteries always lie on me on this thing. Um, but my main one again is the Unity UT801. Um, we've replaced the probes. We got new probes again from Louis Rossman's website. Um, I always keep the protections on because these things are very, very pointy and it can sting you pretty bad. So you can see here how thin they are and uh, how pointy they are. So be very careful with them. They're, they're really nice because you can go into very, very tight places, especially with uh, phone and tablet motherboards and you can measure everything um, very easy with these things. Moving on to the hot air stations. The main workhorse is the Quick 861DA. Um, I used the DW in the past, but it was a tired old machine that wasn't even calibrated. So um, I ended up not buying them for a very long period of time. Uh, recently, well, I say recently, a couple of months ago, I decided to bite the bullet and buy one, and um, I don't regret it one bit. It um, Once it's properly calibrated, then you have your channel set up. So you have channel 1, 2, and 3. Now it's on to sleep. Uh, so we have channel 1, we have 365 degrees with 100, deg with 100 airflow. Channel 2 for re removing uh, digitizer and whatnot at 150 degrees with 85 airflow and 180 with 90 for those, uh, those Samsung tablets that use that rubbery, uh, spongy glue. Um, the reason I got the DA and not the DW is because of the angled tips, you can see here. So it makes my life much easier working under the microscope and obviously presenting you the, the, the footage of that rather than having the whole image blocked by a big nozzle. So it comes with a couple of nozzles um, and they're all angled. The downside to that is that whenever you want to use it for doing an iPad, you need to remove the nozzle and just use it as it is. Um, those would be the, the, the pros. And again, they're very, very accurate. Once you have them set up properly, they don't, uh, they don't go off um, by any number of degrees. Um, the downside of this machine is that it comes with this base. And this base, whenever you're hooking this thing into it, it automatically goes into a cool down mode. Um, not very helpful when you're doing, you know, a lot of removals and taking a capacitor out or an IC out and then you want to keep the machine still hot and, you know, put it back together. But for that, we've, uh, we've made this thing here, which I got from a very, very old hot air station. And what I do is I just hook this in here like that, and then it's it still stays running and warm. Uh, so this is the the DW the DA that I use, not the DW. 
as far as I can I can see online and from what I've heard from other people, the only difference is the the nozzles and the, the way they fit. The second one that I'm using it's a quick 860 DA. Uh, this is our latest addition to the hot air family. Um, I got it mainly because I've seen it online and it looked very very useful for removing capacitors. The uh, the heads are very 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 small they go from um let's see here do, 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 do. they go from 1.5 millimeters to four millimeters and the airflow can be adjusted to nearly zero um, so that way if you want to to work on something localized very localized you can do that without um, risking burning anything on the other side same thing as the the big brother uh, when you put it into its base it automatically goes into cool down mode um, but again for that we've used this thing from an old uh, soldering gun it just sits in there and it works for whenever we need to use stuff on it obviously you can still remove ic's with that one it's not as powerful as the da as you would expect but um and it's not noisy either like it's um this is as, as loud as it gets with the airflow and everything it has a vibrating motor rather than an, um, you know like the da with an electric switch inside um, moving on to the microscope we have an Amscope SM745TP, this thing here, which is a simulfocal. So we can use the camera while we're watching through the scopes. Uh, before that, we, we got one where you would only be able to use one eyepiece while the camera was running, and that was a huge inconvenience. You can't work under a microscope with one eye. Um, moving on to the camera. It's a Lapson camera, it's a 1080p, 60 frames per second, uh, Lapson 1600. Uh, got it on eBay, wasn't that expensive, so you don't need to have expensive tools to, to do great production videos, if you like. Um, it has a 0.3 reduction lens here, um, just the lens. This thing here, we kind of, we cut it from a, from a bigger one because we couldn't find a lens that would fit this, this base here. Um, I also have a 0.7 Barlow lens underneath this to give me that extra bit of distance. The LED ring, it's a Kaisi uh, LED ring and so far it's the best LED ring I've used. This microscope came with an Amscope LED ring and I must say it was very very bad. You couldn't see anything uh, on the camera with it, it was so poor. But since we got this it's, it's crazy like the, the light that it gives you. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. Look there. So this would be at its maximum, right? And it can go as low as this. So, so this is its minimum. And this would be the maximum brightness. It also has a few modes where it switches around the, the LED uh, rings. So this is the microscope that we use. We've mounted it into the desk uh, for convenience because the base was quite big. Um, and yeah, this is the way we use our microscope. Next thing up on the list is the power supply. I'm gonna move this out of the way so you can see it better. So the power supply is probably the only weak point, air quotes with this, um, in the whole setup that we have in the sense that it's not a fancy power supply, it's not an expensive power supply. We got it again four or five years ago. I can't even remember where we got it, but uh, it's doing its job for what we use it for, the, the small applications that we use it for. It's okay so far, we are going to, to replace it in the future. Uh, but so far, it, again, it, it works the way it should. It, it gives us the right values. It, it turns on <laughs> as it should. It gives you power. 
um, nothing fancy about it um, but we've basically combined the power supply with uh, the shape us l001 uh, which we got from union repair um, what this thing does is basically gives you the option to turn on and um, also give power to a certain to any well not to any but to different iphone models like the, the 5s the um, the 6, the 6 Plus, the 7, 7 Plus, and you can see the power draw on this screen. Um, it has two buttons here, one where it actually gives the voltage through the cable and the other one um, adjusts the voltage to the battery uh, that the phone is detecting. Um, the next thing that we got in terms of power things is the, uh, the USB charger, which is this one here. Um, we i found this about three years ago i think i was um going on, on a, a different computer repair shop and uh, the owner have just bought this thing and um, i played with it for a day or two and i was very impressed by it and um, i ended up getting the second one for convenience this one here is permanent it just stays there same as the shape us it has a u8 usb um, hub um, it has an led lcd screen here which uh, turns green whenever it's uh, giving power to devices. The, I suppose the, the plus thing about this or the, the main feature about this that I like is the fact that whenever you're charging something, if the, if the phone is charging normally, let's say an iPhone 6S, um, this thing has two values there. It has one amp and it has 2.4 amps. If the phone is okay, it'll charge the battery at 2.4 amps. Well, it won't charge at 2.4, but that's what this thing shows here. If it has a problem with the battery or if it has a problem with the power IC or with the charging IC, it'll stay at one amp, which is really not normal for a 6S. Um, the other nice thing about it is if the battery is faulty and you plug in the phone, it'll say that the battery is full at any given percentage. So you have batteries that fail at 25, 35, 40%. The, the charger will say that the battery is full, so that's a way to sort of diagnose that the battery is faulty as well. Um, next thing up is the fan extractor. Um, quite loud, but it has a big working distance, so I normally keep it around here, and you can see the desk is here, so it's you have 30-40 centimeters of space in here. Um, features LED rings. Sorry if I blinded you. Um, it's not a fully fledged fume extractor, you know, by any means, but uh, we have an open environment here. And the main reason for this was to stop us from inhaling the, the fumes directly. They just go up now. Um, but for heavier applications, we also have um, 3M uh, face masks. Moving on to the soldering irons, we have the quick 203H and the quick 203G. Um, why two? Well, it's simple. The first one, it's smaller and it's our daily worker, basically. We use that for all our um, micro soldering stuff on iPhones, on iPads. The, the tip is very small. It's an angled one millimeter tip. I don't know if you can see it. So the, even the condition of the, of the element is, is worn. Like we use it day in, day out. This thing just works. Um, the second one, we got it because it has a huge, huge tip. We mainly use this one for laptops, for Playstations, for Xboxes, for, for big applications. It, it has a lot of power into it and it just melts everything like it's, it's a monster. Um, why the two? Well, as I've said, you can do this basically with uh, what you do with, with the big one. The problem is you'll burn your tips and you'll burn your resistance. Um, More often than not, I would not use this for, you know, for big applications because, again, tips are not expensive, but, you know, you don't want to go through them like, like they're nothing. Um, they have this, this base, both of them, which feature um, a cool down function. So if you don't use it for a longer than, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, it's, it goes to sleep. Um, same thing with the two as with the other quicks, you can uh, calibrate them. You don't have programs, but you, you, you can calibrate them. That's absolutely no problem. The bigger one also has fans in it to cool it down because again, it's a much, much bigger piece of equipment. 
Um, in addition to the soldering machines, we also have the uh, the tip cleaner that we got. Same thing from Quick. It's a Quick 310. It has um, brushes inside, and it helps keep your your tips clean and fresh. Um, we don't use it very very often because the temperatures that we have set up on our on our stations um, they're safe for the tips, so they don't burn out. But sometimes when you melt plastic or when you do various other things, um, they get gunky and you need to clean them properly. And I think last thing on the list is the, the UV lamp. There you go. We got this same thing from Minion Repair. Um, in the past we've used a, a professional um, nail um, UV lamp. To, to cure the, the UV mask that we use. Um, but this thing here is an absolute beast. Like it's, it has only one LED inside, but it cures everything probably 10 or 20 times quicker. Like we used to keep motherboards in the, in the UV lamp, the, the professional UV lamp for 15, 20, 30 minutes for the, the UV mask to cure and it would still not be perfect. With this thing, it, it, it cures in literally one or two minutes. So this was the overall look of the equipment that we use. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like to see more in-depth um, reviews of the equipment that we use, feel free to leave a comment in the section down below. Um, I've been Michael from MyTech Repairs. Again, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for all the, the support so far. And um, I'll see you next time.